guys welcome to episode four of custom world live adrian sellers here repping the custom program for royal enfield from the uk and uh, i've got a very special guest with us today uh, nico from smoked garage live from indonesia How you going? how's it going man thank you for joining us it's a, it's a pleasure I notice you've got uh, something special there in the background. We haven't had this at uh, any of our previous episodes here, but you actually have the real live custom bike that we're going to be talking about. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we've been very lucky. Um, Royal, Field, Royal Enfield Indonesia has lent us the bike again, um, gave me the keys, and we're not going to give it back. So, yeah, <laughs> it's been, it's been, we've been very lucky. <laughs> Yeah, you got a little extra decoration in the apartment uh, for the lockdown here, so that that's cool. Uh, yes, um, yes, exactly. Yeah, so before we get into this awesome build, um, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Uh, how did you get into building? You know, obviously, you, you, you're not just a builder, but you've got a shop, a retail shop as well. Um, yeah, how did, how did that all start? Well, it started, I think, with you know everybody's uh, little child dream. You know, when when it, when we were younger, um, we started building cars um, from Australia. And when we actually got, when I went back to Indonesia, um, we had a little workshop at home that we just built. You know, our own little motorcycles. And another friend wanted a bike, and another friend. And then slowly, with a group of us, we started. Then you know what? Let's let's establish something here. And I think in 2014, we actually started then, you know, representing ourselves into the brand Smoke Garage. Um, so yeah, it's been a long journey, but an exciting journey. Um, and now we're probably producing around, I don't know, 20 to about 30 bikes a month. So it's, it does get challenging. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet. And I imagine you've got a pretty talented crew working there with you. Yes, we actually do. So it's a, we were a group of 20 people and uh, yeah, it can get really hectic um, with anything. So we know we become more like a family and uh, it's, I don't know, I, I can't see myself doing anything else. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, we're here today to talk about um, your build, of course, but uh, also where it started um, with the, uh, the Himalayan. Uh, I believe this is the actual bike uh, that turned into the bike behind you there. Um, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, about how this how this base model here, how the Himalayan led to um, finally the the SG four eleven? Um, yeah, I mean it's a beautiful bike. I mean it was actually quite sad to actually uh, dismantle it the first. You know, um, you know we had such a fun time with it we took it to the beach we really trialed and, and tested all the um the suspension and the actual engine of the power and you know we we actually really loved it and you know team of us then sat down and we said how would we as smoke garage would we you know challenge this bike into something else um so from there on uh, we actually then figured out this bike has actually a, a lot of capability of the off-road and uh, we actually wanted to emphasize that a lot in the actual bike um but yet something so beautiful that you can park in front of a nice cafe you know in the middle of the city um so the team of us sat down and uh, we wanted to sort of give that uh neo feel in the future um then we decided to actually what kind of colors do we want to go for and uh, you can see there at the screen we decided to go for more of that, you know, navy green with this, you know, you know, orange highlight to emphasize, I think, uh, uh, ruggedness and modernness. 
And um, yeah, that was sort of where we sort of got the inspiration from, I could say. Yeah, I think it was it was cool for us to see also this blend of um, fashion and and function going into the the bike. I mean, obviously the forms are pretty incredible, um, but at the same time, you know, you've got these, uh, you know, you got this feeling that it could go through anything. That it is in fact a uh, a pretty hardcore uh, motorcycle in and of itself. So we were talking about um, your process a little bit, um, I know some some builders go right into the metal and and do, you know just sort of let the bike sort of figure out its way forward. Um, you go through a, a very a, a process very similar to what we use when designing the stock motorcycle um, with sketches leading into um, uh, real models and so on. So how does that work for you? Yeah, um, it's, it's, yeah, we, we sort of go same, uh, same process, probably like larger manufacturer does. Um, so basically first we then uh, compile a lot of designs that we like um, then we actually measure the motorcycle uh, put everything into a scale have it in a digital format then we actually dismantle it like in the actual if you had uh, in digitally like you were thinking you take off the actual fuel tank and go to the um, actual subframe and the swing arm and all the rest uh, then we actually design everything to scale it. From there on, we sort of have a little bit of a rendering to figure out if the geometry and all this works well. Uh, and of course, once the once we actually are happy with the design um, digitally in the computer, then we actually print it in a massive one-to-one -one scale, where we actually then put it next to a bike in the background to actually see the lines through just a. Um, in the actual um, paper wise. And once we're actually happy with that, then we actually then go into more of a foam situation where, yes, there you go, with, the, with actually the foam and we actually shave off, we match, actually make a massive block of foam that we actually uh, mold into the actual subframe. Then we actually start to cut, cut it and sand it down uh, to the scale that we actually think is suitable. Uh, the beauty of that, having the um, foam on it, we can actually sit on it and feel it and feel it in our uh, thighs if that actually is the, the shape that we want, uh, you know, and the heat point and the feet and all this. So it really helps us produce a perfect product at the end when we uh, do everything in the foam. Again, that's remarkably similar to, to how we do this in production and, you know, the same, essentially the same process that went into the uh, the original Himalayan as well. Um, so when, obviously you're not making it in foam finally, so what, what materials did you choose for actually making the body work and how did, how did you go about transitioning from this foam model um, to, the actual, to the actual forms? Um, we experimented with a lot of different materials. Uh, we tried a fiberglass. Uh, we then went to a, a carbon and we sort of fiddled with the materials. Uh, the biggest concern that we had at the time was it was a monocoque. It's a one piece. Uh, you can see the body's a uniform one piece. So the fuel tank and the actual rear part of the fray, uh, um, body works is all one piece. And what we worried with the, um, if we use uh, maybe uh, fiberglass, was the twist when we go you know, for, through the hard terrains we don't want any cracks or anything that's gonna, you know, crack and snap. So the aluminium yeah. was a, probably the better choice. Um, it's it's quite light. Also, the aluminium uh, it's very strong. Uh, it's just only very hard to actually uh, build things with aluminium. Of course, you know, with the material being so hard, yet when you weld, it's being soft. Uh, and having a fuel tank. Welded exactly, they see uh, having the fuel tank welded to the actual rear part. It was a it was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> trying to not make the fuel tank not leak uh, and all that, and having fuel mm. pumps and having the reader also welded, you know, in the thing was uh, it was a very very difficult time. But at the end, I I think it really paid off. Just being so rugged, you know, and uh, what we are worried was also if you add, you know. If you have an accident with this motorcycle, having an aluminum tank, you know, it doesn't stock up any uh, 
uh, metal so it can't you know self burn that was really important for us uh, yeah it's also rugged enough if 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 the um, bike actually fell let's say in a big stone or a big uh, tree log it's not gonna burst through the fuel tank because it was quite thick it's five millimeters actually um, you know it, it, it's it really does handle it looks really beautiful but really handles like a like a really utility bike um, you can really push this bike if you want to to the edge um, and it, it should yeah. serve fast really well yeah, and that's that's a very real concern for you, of course, because uh, as as people will see later in uh, in the video after uh, after our talk here, um, you actually did put it through its paces quite a bit. Um, yeah, it's impressive actually for, yes. for, for all that went into it that you uh, that you had the guts to to ride it like that. But um, so we <laughs> well, had some we... questions here uh, from people. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Go on. Sorry. Yeah. So it's a we had a bunch of questions for people about um, what sort of modifications did you make to the to the base bike? So obviously you've created the, this all new monocoque um, structure over it. What sort of modifications did you need to make to the frame and so on to make sure that fit? Yes, uh, I think the biggest change was the, um, first of all, when we actually realized that we wanted this thing to be very utility. So we actually raised the bike a little bit higher um, by changing the front suspension to an upside down suspension. Just gives it that more um, uh, larger travel. Uh, the original ones were, were actually very good also, but we just decided to take it a little bit more further, um, giving where we actually gonna jump this bike up. So we uh, changed it to an upside mm -hmm. down. We decided to go for a, a double disc brake also, just to give it more uh, steady firm if we were in mud, so it doesn't seize up in the brakes. Um, we actually also then changed the um, subframe, of course. Uh, we wanted to be a little bit more slimmer, having just a single seater on it, so we could, act, you know, we actually um, shorten it and, and cut it a bit more shorter. The swing arm. We decided to go for a uh, linkage um, for the monoshock, so we actually hit the monoshock inside, so it's not going to get any dirt inside of the monoshock. It's going to damage our suspension, mm -hmm. uh, so we have to make a custom swing arm for it that has a custom linkage that then pushes it. Uh, that was probably the biggest uh, dilemma that we had through it because the monoshock is sitting in a 45 degree angle. Uh, yeah. Yet everything inside has to move and can't hit any of the body works. Um, well, yeah, uh, that, so imagine that was, quite a bit was, of quite that. a bit of testing went into that as well. Yes, a lot of testing. Uh, uh, we don't have the best equipment like uh, factory does. So what we actually do is uh, we actually uh, I remember we put a like a forty kilograms uh, plastic bag or we can't say like a material. And we actually stacked 100 kilograms on the top of the seat. Uh, we, then we rode it, so I was probably 60 kilos. It was 160 kilos. We jumped it to see if the suspension actually works. Uh, if it if it does break <laughs> when we actually have it on an R and D, uh, then we you know at least we could fiddle with it and buy a new suspension for it. So yeah, we really tried ha the hardest on this. You know, making it. You know, if this bike was actually in a production mode. This would be ready to be in production mode. Everything has been calculated correctly. So that is really impressive. With the you know the way it's a it's a very, very styled, very designed form. It would have been easier just to make this as a you know essentially a static model or or just barely function and, and be all be all looks. But uh, to actually have it work like it does, and like I said, everybody will see that a bit later um, how this thing actually can jump um, is, is solidly <laughs> impressive. But uh, you know, and, and enough about the process and everything. You've got the bike behind you. Um, can you can you walk us through uh, the build? So show us some of the details that went into this. Yeah, of course, of course. So um, you can see here. Uh, I've actually got the um, the double disc brake here. We've got this, this beautiful carbon. I, I don't know if you guys can see that through the camera. And we decided yep. to go for the lightweight lightweight uh, material. Uh, because it just gives it the more aerodynamic look of it. Um, we've got this beautiful dust cover shield because what happens is when you go fast and actually in you know, sand and dust, what happens is you usually damage the um, upside down suspension. 
So by having this cover here, protects it from all the um, stone chips you can see here. Uh, actually, while I've got this here, I can show you how detailed this bike is. There. You can see just the brake line has you know, all these nice uh, holders that we have to custom build for each bike. Uh, got the logo there. We've got this one piece uh, headlights, one off, of course. It's got the beautiful three lines there that goes through. Uh, I love this orange that we've done here. It just you know emphasizes the actual neo feel to it. <laughs> uh, I mean, what do you think, Adrian? I mean, have you seen this thing close up yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, well, it's been a, been a little while now. I think uh, we had it at uh, last time I saw it was at uh, Custom Fest last year. Um, yeah, I mean, I absolutely love the uh, the the pop color detailing on it. Um, that really. The, it, again, it was that balance of style and uh, utility. Uh, so you get that same orange on like, um, you know, warning, warning lettering on a, on a um, military plane or something like that. So that was, that was pretty cool. Um, but I really like, you know, as well though, is that, uh, is the way you've integrated a, a whole new um, dash and everything. Could you tell, tell everybody a little bit about the, um, the control system for the bike and, and what that does? Yes. Uh, so, the actual phone runs on a on a phone system, so the beauty of the thing. Uh, it runs on a motor gadget, so you can see I'm gonna slowly come to there. So that's how you actually turn the bike on there. Uh, it's got the beautiful um, H clusters that you can see there. It's got this beautiful actual uh, LED indicators that actually illuminates while it's having the bike on. Um, see here you can see there it's got the little hole there inside that's actually to pull the rope if you actually had a hard time um, in the desert or in the forest and you have to put a rope you can put the rope through that and then actually have a pull time for the bike uh, oh, yeah, actually, <laughs> wow i've got this here look at that yeah you really nice. see the the handcraft that we built yeah oh yeah it's, it's really nice uh, we chose it for the, um, that old, that, the green navy. Yeah, so yes, that, that headlamp is all custom made, is that right? Yes, this is a, actually a one piece um, we actually built. So this uh, just kind of focus that there. So it's actually got three pieces on there and it was built in one piece. Uh, actually, I've got it in high beam right now. With the low beam, actually one of the light only turns on. Uh, and you can see through there. Uh, on how actually this is built there. There you go. Actually goes very cool. It. Really, really cool. Yeah, it actually illuminates at night very nicely. So uh, nice we've one, chosen man. the um, we've chosen this navy green you see here with the lighting. It's got this really matte finish to it, um, and then with the high gloss, high gloss writing there, will just gives it that you know ex expensive uh, magazine feel, and I I, I we really love that. You know, with this kind of bikes, um, so this kind of details. We, we've actually st stuck the original fuel um, lid just because it gives it that sort of uh, aerospace look, which we really like. So that was really cool. And we did keep that original from Himalayan. Uh, the handlebars are more process of handlebars that we went through uh, with the rigidity. If you fell down, these things flip up. So that's the beauty of it. Um, Nice. Yeah. Uh, so you were talking a little bit earlier about the suspension changes there. Um, yes. Can you, can you so, focus in a little bit on, on the suspension? Yes. So these are actually uh, all in suspension right now. Um, we actually uh, spray painted them orange just to uh, give it a feel. You can see here is actually, I mean, I almost can't fit my hand in there. That's how tight everything is there. But it really does work really well. Uh, uh, if you, if I can zoom in there, you see there. Uh, so I'm gonna slowly pull back where the linkage is because probably this is one of the most amazing uh, engineering you can get there. So you can see it there. It actually has a, a push rod that pushes it inside. Then this actually pushes the inner suspension, and then that pushes the linkage to the top. So that's actually how it works. Uh, it's actually, if you look here, it's, it's actually rubbered inside, so there's no dirt can come inside. 
So it's all screwed in nice and tight. Uh, this is how much detail we actually do. So this is actually carbon fiber that you see here. And if you look closely, it's actually yeah. got the beautiful green, just beautiful orange on it. Um, this is actually the key for the uh, motorcycle, just to open the back seat. So, um, huh. and then it's got that beautiful custom swing arm there. Uh, the one piece swing arm that we actually built. Nice one. There, uh, we got a couple also questions about the the wheels themselves um, and how the bike how the bike handles. Obviously, they're 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 a bit more of a balloon style than your standard uh, uh, off road tires that the or or enduro tires that the the bike comes on my stock. Um, so it, does it does it still ride pretty well with with the larger uh, tires on it? Um, does it uh, give you any trouble? Is it harder to turn? Yes, uh, actually, surprisingly, it actually rides really well, um, considering the thing. Uh, I've actually driven this thing for about 120 clicks. It doesn't shake, it doesn't wiggle. Uh, I think just having this strong, you know, uh, torquey engine uh, and stability, the frames really well from, from the factory. It's very stable, to be honest. Uh, and uh, it was actually amazing. Uh, I was actually quite shocked to see how the bag actually handles with the uh, 180 in the back. Uh, Actually, we don't have any troubles with it, so it's it's been surprisingly be very very exciting that it can handle all that. Nice one, and uh, the seat material itself. So how did you go about that? It's a combination of two, two different leathers on it. Yes, uh, so we actually recycled the original seat from the Himalayan. So this is actually the original seat in Malaya, and then this is actually we add <laughs> this nice leather with, with the original stitching there, the green stitching. So yeah, we actually, the cloth bit actually has been recycled because what what we what I realized when when we actually were test driving this bike, the original seat actually does not allow you to slip in the corners. So we really like the yep. material, and we we were trying to source the same material and we could not find it. So. Yeah, it was really impressive. So we, we then decided to cut the original seats off and reuse it. Uh, and actually we had a couple of extras and we actually used the extras for other bikes. So it was really hard to find the material. So um, it's very <laughs> impressive, the material, the seats. Nice. Oh, that's very cool that you're able to reuse that. And I just saw you earlier there pulling around to the, the tail lamp. It looks like the tail lamp was done in a similar fashion to the uh, headlamp. Yes, uh, so this is actually one of my personal favorite bit from the motorcycle. It's got these beautiful three lines you can see here. Um, it gives it that eerie, eerie that uh, to it. Uh, and then these are the actual brake lights. It's got one there, and then the other one's from here. You can see. It. And when brake, uh, you don't really see it here right now. This actually then will illuminate the riding so it for it. Hey, hey, Nico. That's awesome, man. Cool. Well, thank awesome. you for that. Awesome. Thank you for that walkthrough, man. That was uh, that was awesome and something really special. So, I mean, we got we got, like so we we base a, a lot of this uh, of our our focus here on the questions that we get from different people, and and with this build, we got a lot. Um, you've talked about where you came from. We've talked about the build itself, um, your process, and everything. Um, what what advice would you give to uh, aspiring builders? Um, what what you know? Obviously, we know you got you into it, but what would you tell people who want to want to dive in themselves? I would just say, just jump in. I mean, it's a beautiful thing when you're building bikes. You know, it really it really shows your your character um, to people. Um, it, that's what actually for me personally, I just loved it because. You know, not all motorcycles are made for you. And uh, when you start to customize motorcycle, I think it projects who you are. Um, so if you love it, just do it. Uh, you know, I remember at home being bored and I think through my bikes all the time. And um, it's, a, it's a really cool thing. Um, just, I, I, the only thing I say is just do it. And especially, especially if we have to stay at home right now like this, you know, the best thing is just to actually <laughs> Jump, jump on your motorcycle, wash it, and tinkle with it. Uh, tweak it to this perfection that you like it. And uh, if you want to be in this sort of industry, I would say uh, 
to do your calculation correctly um, and just jump in it. Don't don't think about too, too many times. Just just jump in it. Fantastic, man. That's awesome advice, and and it's a very good point. You know, with everybody locked down around the world, uh, now is a really good time to uh, start realizing the dreams. If you had any idea towards customization, um, you've got no excuses not to do it right now. It's not like anybody's going anywhere. So, um, exactly, brilliant, man. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Okay, well, I mean, I really appreciate yeah. you joining us. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. And, and uh, I think Thank we'll you, leave everybody with uh, this. Yeah, I think we'll leave everybody with this amazing video that, that you shot um, showing that the bike not only looks good, um, but also rides the business. So, um, to everybody, thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed the video here. And we will catch you next week as we talk with uh, Bandit Nine. Until then. We'll love, we'll love to see it. So thank you for having us here. And everyone, you know, please stay safe. And uh, yeah, it's been a long time, Adrian. And I hope we can see you uh, in a short time. And uh, we have a couple other, hopefully, uh, cool things that we want to show you guys in a very close future. And uh, yeah, see you then. Sweet, man. We'll catch you soon.